righty, here we go. Method Orange Grand Finals versus Super Frog. We're caught a little bit off guard here because Method Orange, they're going to be locking in the Windwalker Death Knight against Super Frog's Rogue Lock Druid. And I think this is a good matchup here for Method Orange. I just wanted to see Snuts on Destruction again. I'm just really sad about that here in game number one. But it's Snuts either way on that Assassination Rogue. They were able to beat the Demon Hunter Death Knight on Dalaran when these teams met earlier today. Perhaps the same is true here on the Grand Arena. Cubsy currently in a fear that was stolen by Mez. Now Mez, though, in a double mortal coil. Chanimal trying to set up off the back of that, but unable to. Denied now by Chun-Li. Sidu feared up. Mez and Trill both low on health. The Windwalker Monk is somewhat self-sustainable with likely expel harm being played, but a lot less self-sustainable than the Demon Hunter that Trill was playing, which means there will be more pressure on Sidu to heal his team throughout the match. And mana is slowly etching in favor of Cubsy, but a ton of damage now may force him to expend a lot of that mana. Chanimal boldly just counter-engaging on this smoke bomb, trying to build up some pressure for his team. Not able to find it. Iron Bark seems to be enough for Cubsy to stabilize Chanimal here in the grand final for North America. A best of seven to decide if the Super Frogs can tie the boys in points. Yep, definitely. You know, just taking a quick look at Trill's gear just to see exactly what he's doing. He often plays unique builds, uh, but Trill actually caught into a kidney shot. Could fall immediately into the bash. A beautiful setup by Super Frogs, and unfortunately, Method Orange, Trill with that relentless talent, got punished. I, I feel like it shouldn't be possible compositionally, but they've been on fire today. Starting it off with that double destruction warlock now going back to something more standard However, we would say is weaker compositionally method orange have set themselves up for success here in game two as they look to tie the series back Cubsy playing feral affinity So maybe a new addition on his part to add some extra damage to the team Definitely could be an X factor for them to find a kill early on though We see method orange dealing devastation across the board here as Chanimal struggles to recover Cubsy keeps it calm cool and collected not over exchanging his defensive lineup and stabilizing the team efficiently Yeah, trill now caught into a kidney shot do they have any damage to really get anything rolling i think it's unlikely at this point i really like that offensive push there from method orange they managed to get the iron bark from cubsy as well as the innervate for him to stabilize but that offensive push a little later on will be significant especially if they can coordinate their maledict trinkets once again Mez jumping down. I think he was looking for a death grip on a Chanimals, but unable to find it. Now Infernal's going to be dropped out as Chanimals looking to get aggressive. Cubsy pushing in, finds the Bash Cyclone. On to Sidu. Mez unable to deny. Now the Mortal Coil comes out. Trill could be in some trouble, but a nice death grip by Mez saves Trill from that Chaos Bolt. I mean, even still, Smoke Bomb gets dropped as they try to take down Trill. They overlap, they panic. Big panic attack for Method Orange, overlapping two major defensive cooldowns. Fortunately, they do line up for Infernals, but now they won't have them for Vendetta. And I like that Snuts and Chanimal are splitting up the threats that they bring in this fight. If they commit at the same time, then Method Orange makes one trade for two. Now Snuts has an opportunity to be the MVP. He engages. Crowd control looks good in this position. Will Anti-Magic Zone be enough to keep Trill alive? for Sidu to get back to his team and start healing him up. It looks to be the case. Good plays there on Mez. Definitely keeping a level head, not overreacting earlier on. Having that answer for Vendetta was definitely key to Trill's survival. Yeah, Cubsy gonna be trying to create space once again. If he goes for a drink, it could give his team a decent lead. Trill into the kidney shot. Trill's been under so much pressure in this game. Sidu gets interrupted. Trill has to trink it out. He uses blur as well, and really there's no defense left. Look at Sidu, no trinket, no spirit link. Trill, no trinket, no darkness, no blur, no nothing. If Super Frogs can get one more clean setup, Chanimals has unending resolve and Dark Soul. I wanna see it. If they can get crowd control on Sidu, use Dark Soul with the unending resolve, they could easily close out this game. All right, can they do it? Can the Super Frogs pull off a game two victory against Method Orange? Chanimal has pulled the trigger. He's ready to get going. Getting one Chaos Bolt, no denied on it. Trill realizes that situation was dire. Decides to play defensive at the boxes. The advantage that Dalaran Sewers provides is that there's always room for cover very close by, and they are going to exploit that here and now. And then Orange still have set themselves up for success despite that little bit of a panic attack earlier on their cooldowns are rotating back and readily available it's unlikely that we see a target go down before dampening in this specific matchup 
Hover pressure has been back and forth. I'm curious to see if Cubsy can utilize that feral affinity to get a kill for his team. Snuts gets death grip down below. Good out positioning here by Method Orange to burst down Snuts. Cubsy moves in. Able to stabilize, no overreaction in terms of cooldown management. Cubsy now looking for crowd control onto Sidu. Managing to chain together Bash and Cyclone. Trill could now be in trouble as a result. He exchanges Blur to reduce damage during crowd control on his healer. Definitely a smart idea. Using that Consume Soul to get a shield, dispelling a heal over time effect. And definitely that Azerite trait, Burning Soul for the Demon Hunter, is paying its weight in gold, providing Trill a lot of self-sufficiency. Yes, yeah, Snuts has been instantaneously kicking Trill's eye beams You can't even see it go off. It's being interrupted so fast. Snuts now kidney shotting Trill, but it doesn't look like there's much pressure. Snuts actually getting some bleeds up onto Sidu, potentially setting him up for a swap a little bit later on. Chanmos gets gripped away by Mez, trying to deny some of his destruction warlock damage, really bringing him into a bad position. Cubsy now is very close for Trill to actually swap over and try to get some mana rifts if he so chooses. Kidney shot now into Mez with the smoke bomb gets dropped out. Chanmos looking for some damage. Sidu with a beautiful grounding totem shuts down that chaos bolt and keeps Mez alive. Any pre tremors, Chanmos fear, really good shutdown by Sidu, denying damage and crowd control, securing a lead for his team now. That panic attack. There was no opening now for the Super Frogs to take advantage of with Darkness. Rotated back and available. Spirit Link Totem as well. The mana lead is establishing itself here for Method Orange. Unless Cubsy can do what he's doing right now, Trill actually gives up on trying to deny it. I think Cubsy has managed to reset his mana, which I was really surprised to see here on Dalaran Sewers. Is he going to reset his mana and get defensive cooldowns from Mez at the same time? No, he didn't. What happened, Cubsy? I'm not sure, but unfortunately he wasn't able to find the drink that he needed and things are looking good for Method Orange. Janimal's looking to get really aggressive with the Infernals. Can he get the Cataclysm? No, he's getting chain interrupted, forced to gate away. Cubsy sitting down for a drink. Chanimal's kiting. Cubsy just hiding in plain sight. Did he get any mana back there? Barely any at all. Mez needs to not overextend. Sidu on top of him, though. Drops the Earthen Shield Totem, giving his team a little bit more durability as they look to put, continue this push onto Chanimal's and continue to burn down the mana of Cubsy. Yeah, it's looking better and better for Method Orange here in game number two as they look to tie it up. Chanimal's in danger. He's refusing to make a trade, makes it very late. Potentially an opening to crush him through it. Method Orange are trying to go for it and find it. They want to put a point on the board and advance in the rest of this series. Grand Finals, best of seven. Mez now getting counter pressured though. Seemingly out of nowhere. Darkness and Spear Link Totem once again. A panic attack for Method Orange, but at least they stay alive. Now they've got an opening to kill Chanimal and they're going to close it out right before that punishment could have came in from the Super Frogs. This series now brought one to one. A lot of pressure coming out onto the Super Frogs though. If they do want to take down the Super Frogs, but the Super Frogs let up here and they throw away one of the large maps. You have to say Method Orange may be able to just take this cleanly. Yep, they most certainly can, but it is going to be an uphill battle. We have seen this Elemental Shaman Frost Mage composition devastate melee cleaves, and that is exactly what Method Orange are playing here in game number three. Trill getting bursted down early on. Snuts trying to sneak in crowd control, not able to find it. Denied by Grounding Totem. Good defensive play on Sidu's part. Now, in the meantime, this is what we are critiquing from the team of the Pumpers in Europe, is that they need to coordinate their three Maledict gets at the same time for a big push and it's the same condition for method orange here to take down wealthy man i want to see all three members coordinate one player launch first to bait out the dispel then the second player launch and the third player after that if they can combine their three gladiators maledicts in this order they can complete the puzzle force a major defensive cooldown or net themselves a kill Yep, and I was just looking quickly at what Trill was running in terms of talents as well as Azerite traits. In this match, he's running the Turbo Fist as well as the Expel Harm and the Ride the Wind. So the Ride the Wind, uh, once he uses the Flying Serpent Kick, it'll drop a little bit of a cloud. I'll make sure to point it out if he does use it soon, what it looks like, but it basically allows everyone in that cloud to get freedom, and it can be very effective against the Frost Mage at reaching the target once again, especially useful for helping out Mez or Sidu if they are chasing him down. Well, Man is trying to play at the starting room entrance. That has now dragged Sidu into center field. 
Curious to see how they plan to play around this. Yes, it's going to be polymorphing up Sea-Doo. Good positioning by the team of the Super Frogs to expose Trill and Sea-Doo. Now they can switch their attention to Mez when Trill tries to retreat. Mez doesn't have the same type of mobility. Instead, using Death Strike on that Fire Elemental as he makes his way back out of line of sight. Good awareness on his part, catching himself a heal. But now they can switch to Sea-Doo, who is the third member that was left behind at the end of that crowd control chain. And... If they can keep doing what they just did right there deeper into dampening, certainly the Super Frogs are going to take this. Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. And looking at the gear, both Mez and Trill are running double bonded souls. So trying to help out Sidu with a little bit of additional healing. It also has a haste proc on it, but I think most of these players in these tournaments are using bonded souls as that secondary trait to really boost the healing of their teams. And they have four of those just from Mez and Trill. I'm not sure how many Sidu are running, but that's definitely going to help them sustain during these moments where they're getting bursted down by Wealthy Man. It's not to allow them in the open a little bit longer to keep up this pressure. Trill trying to push forward, but taking the brunt of Snuts' burst here. Recovered now by Cubsy. Cubsy even launching out Solar Rast to add in a little bit of extra damage. I think Mez managed to sneak away a Polymorph there with his Dark Simulacrum, but in the meantime, Trill is actually the one that's just getting torn apart. Touch of Karma trades for him. Mez wants to land a Polymorph. Unfortunately, now Cubsy is on Polymorph Diminishing Return, so it's not going to be super effective. However, I believe they're still likely to go with that crowd control chain. No, holding on to it deciding it's not worth it. Instead, just going for raw pressure on Wealthy Man. A ton of damage. Good Maledict play here. Where's the follow-up? They don't have any follow-up. Would really like to see them commit as three members for that. Only one Maledict in that attack is not going to be enough to get an ice block. However, they are slowly and surely establishing a mana lead. Definitely still anyone's match here as we get closer to dampening. Yep, definitely. Cubsy now sitting down for a drink. If he can regenerate enough mana, this is going to be solid for the Super Frogs, and he did manage to do that. I think if Super Frogs can maintain this position, Method Orange, they're going to have to play really aggressive if they want to try to get some kills onto Melthy, Wealthy Man. They have to stay out in the open for some time. Kind of talked about for these cleave setups how important it is to get through the Temporal Shield as well as Cubsy's Iron Bark if they want to secure a kill. If they can't stay in the open long enough to get through those two defensives, it's unlikely they're going to be able to burst Wealthy Man down and actually secure a kill. So there is a bit of uptime required for Mez and Trill in this matchup to take down Wealthy Man. Another, a nice grip into potential double stun, but Wealthy Man with a really quick blink was able to escape, and Cubsy was the only one that got caught in that stun. And as a result, Trill and Mez really weren't able to find the damage. Trill and Mez trying to pressure Cubsy, but on Tolveron Arena, that's going to be difficult to do as he is able to navigate away, and Wealthy Man and Snuts can basically play bodyguard for their healer, and it's really difficult to attack a healer against a Wizard Cleave, and definitely not recommended on the largest map in the pool, so Method Orange are going to then go back to a more standard strategy. It'd be interesting to see if they try and take the strategy that the Pumpers played and send one melee after Snuts, one melee after Wealthy Man, and play for a later game kill in that regard. So far, they don't seem to be wanting to do that instead just consistently looking for swaps to Cubsy as he is trying to get away nice ring of peace by Trill bouncing Cubsy back into the fight Mez connects two on one traveling storm thunderstorm by Snuts to try and peel them off of Cubsy but they're still managing to stay on his back now with that wild charge unlikely to be the case immediately switching their attention back to wealthy men but I do like that method orange are willing to mix it up if someone on super frogs compromises their positioning definitely playing for any edge that they can find yep there it is lightning lasso on mez he's forced to trade out the icebound fortitude to try to avoid some of that damage lightning lasso is a channeled ability so as a player if you trinket it or use a stun breaker like the icebound fortitude for the death knight it will stop the channel and prevent any of that incoming damage so method orange they're opting to try to just avoid damage at this cost Sidu has so much mana he can't even spend it fast enough to keep his team alive and that really could potentially be the problem. I don't really see Sidu going out of mana, but I don't know if he has, <laughs> he basically can't spend his mana fast enough to actually keep his teammates alive in certain situations. Mez now caught into the lightning lasso. Good burst here coming in from the Super Frogs. Can they take him down? Doesn't look like Method Orange will really have to commit too much. Cubsy still 100% mana, been consistently sneaking off for drinks. A full hex has been secured by Snuts onto Sidu, but it doesn't look like Super Frogs really has the damage to get anything done with it. No, they do not. I'm hoping that Sidu expends this mana with the ability called Purge. 
They can remove heal over time effects during a big push on wealthy men and then crush him with nothing but pressure. That's definitely a win condition, assuming that Sidu can make it that deep into dampening and still have his mana retained. We do see Maledic fly in towards Wealthy Man, then Mez coordinates for the second, and then where is the third is now the question. No third Maledic, only two, but even with two, they may be able to get an Ice Block. Iron Bark and Kiting of Wealthy Man is slowing down the pace of the damage and denying that cooldown force. In the meantime, Snuts is trying to carry, similarly to how Swapsy needed to for his team as the caster not being pressured. It's your main goal to obviously maximize your damage, but also look to crowd control the enemy healer. So in this case, Sidu. Wealthy Man's job is to do as much damage as possible as well. It's basically everyone's job to do that, just baseline. But then also position Mez and Trill in a spot where Snuts is more likely to maximize his damage and get crowd control currently wealthy man under fire but with a huge temporal shield bounces right back into the fight yeah it definitely does 15 percent dampening right now cubsy caught into the incapacitate mezzatril looking for a push they might be able to take the first ice block from wealthy man oh iron bark is it gonna or to, what it actually is the defensive oh it is iron bark onto wealthy man okay that should be enough to keep him alive just now but once that fades if method orange can stay in they might be able to easily get off that ice block from wealthy man trill and mez able to sit through with this earthen shield totem dropped by sea nice thunderstorm there by snuts knocking them out of the safety of that defensive cooldown now wealthy man kind of all alone snuts has to play backup polymorph spam coming in from wealthy man he realizes they can't counter pressure right now they just need to stay alive they need to buy time for the temporal shield he manages to find it. Cubsy has to heal him up. He needs to stay alive before that procs, and ultimately it does. Wealthy Man will survive. Now Trill and Mez, they have to stay in there. They need to try to get Iron Bark once again. They could potentially run away, but if they keep running away after just getting Iron Bark and Temporal Shield, these cooldowns just rotate up so quickly that they're not really able to force up the ice blocks they need. I'm starting to think it's possible for Method Orange to win here on Tolveron Arena, and if they can take the biggest map in the pool away from the Super Frogs, that is devastating for the Super Frogs throughout the rest of the series as they do not have melee cleaves under their roster and Method Orange are basically nothing but. So they will take full advantage of that for the rest of the series if they can pull off a victory. I think Sidu is going to have to risk his mana at some point to use Purge and get aggressive with his team, but he's gonna have to pick his timing. If he picks the wrong one and burns out of mana, he's gonna lose the game. If he picks the right one, he's gonna win the game. So everything rides on Sidu here to try and carry the team deeper into dampening in the meantime they would like to try and get ice blocks out of the way without having to expend mana to purge but so far they haven't had any luck yeah, definitely wealthy man getting a little bit low he gets interrupted can't blink looking for frost bolts yeah that's that's just definitely dancing with the devil there wealthy man if he got interrupted on that frost bolt he could have easily gone down without being able to use his ice block but he manages to pay off. Now Wealthy Man still looking for Polymorphs, looking to survive, but big burst damage coming in from Trill and Mez. Wealthy Man blinks away, see you caught into the hex. Good counter pressure here on Trill with no Diffuse and no Karma. Trill is very vulnerable. He can't sit out in the open for too long. Nice Temporal Shield, as well as the Thunderstorm by Snuts will keep Super Frog stable for now, but Trill sitting in the open with no cooldowns. He is forced to retreat, hide behind the pillar, especially with these Polymorphs onto Sea-Doo. Method Orange, get swatted away for the time being. Yeah, Method Orange are still being denied on that ice block objective. Their main goal with killing Wealthy Man. Now Snuts with the lightning lasso to save an ice block potentially. Good timing on Snuts' part, doing his best to allow his team victory here. Icy Veins gets popped. No frozen orb though. This is very peculiar timing. Oh, he's Icy Frost! Why did he pop Icy Veins there, Ven? I'm not sure. That's a good question. But he got locked on Frost, and that was a very scary call. I almost lost my mind. Wealthy Man could have potentially gone down there without using the Ice Block. And at 33% dampening, having not used a single Ice Block, that would have been a complete blunder from the Super Frogs. Now Incapacitate gets used out by Trill. Wealthy Man tries to deflect with the Temporal Shield once again, but Sid... Like you said, he uses Icy Veins. That's his main offensive cooldown. Wasn't able to really get any damage rolling whatsoever. That was definitely mistiming there for the Super Frogs and a potential lost opportunity. Two Maledicts fly towards Wealthy Man. Cubsy's able to dispel. The third one does land. 
Looks like it's good. Uh -oh. Wealthy Man blinks away. He needs to try to avoid the ice block, but things are snowballing out of control here for the Super Frogs. Method Orange, they have a huge lead in terms of momentum. Method Orange finally coordinate together for a three-man effort to get that second and final ice block of the match. If they can coordinate together now with Purge, Sidu has saved up just enough mana to get a couple. They're going to easily crush Wealthy Man on their best map on their comp advantage. They're going to take the swing match if they can manage to pull this off, and likely the rest of the series, they drop Spirit told him to stay aggressive and race the temporal shield find the kill despite the disadvantages provided by the super frogs and now if you're the super frogs in there ultimately we're all left here asking for the double warlock method orange seems to be happy enough with this let's see if it's enough to get them on match point yeah the last time we saw this matchup trill fell quite quickly wasn't able to get his karma off right in the opening stages of the game so i think this is going to be a much more realistic uh, view of how this match actually should go as long as everyone is using their defensive cooldowns channels gets interrupted grips out of line of sight good burst here for method orange Cubsy not over committing, using his innervate right away. And you'll see really good wrestle druids. They'll use their innervate. They can load up their team with heal over time effects. The damage just isn't stopping here for Method Orange. Channels finally stabilizes, but another death grip gets Channels out of position, trying to counter pressure now with the Infernals. Yeah, rain of fire. This chaos bolt could hit huge. Mez denies it. Trill follows up, but he's still low on health. If Channel can sneak in a chaos bolt here, it's going to be big. Connects that on Trill. Tons of pressure. So you do not wanting to choke under that, doesn't want to overlap cooldowns, but if he gets spell locked on a heal like that, Touch of Karma now has to be traded. Maledict to soak up the healing. He gets feared off the back end of the spell lock. Channel on fire right now, just decimating Method Orange. Trill trying to stay alive, but he get gets shot. destroyed in the opening stages of this fight. Chaos Chaos Bolt. Connects. No that way! That was big, big plays on Channel. That was the sickest Warlock plays I've seen this year. Completely <laughs> owned Method Orange. Nice setups. Really is up to Method Orange to make sure they're deflecting these all-in attacks from Super Frogs. And if they can do that, I think they can definitely walk away with this game. Thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we are tied up here in this grand final for the North American region. Method Orange lead the charge here with tons of pressure over onto Chanimal. How much damage can they get out here initially is the question. If they can pull more than just Iron Bark, it would definitely be crucial to finding victory, but they are not finding that just yet. I like Cubsy's positioning at the starting room. If the opposing Demon Hunter Trill decides to march his way over there to get mana rifts, Trill will then move out in the open and Channel can free cast on him. Definitely top tier positioning here from the Super Frogs. Yeah, definitely Snuts caught in the root right now, not able to get too much done. He actually commits his Vanish. What is he going to do with it? Looks like he sets up for a Garrote onto Trill. Potential kidney shot. Channel's lining up a Chaos Bolt, but really no stun to be found just yet. Snuts holding onto it. Finds the kidney shot now on Trill, but with no crowd control on Sidu, I think Trill's going to be able to easily deflect this attack. Yep, he's got more than enough cooldowns banked up to trade against the Super Frogs here on Game 5. And this is not match point just yet, as this is a best of seven grand final. So if you're a Method Orange fan or a Super Frogs fan, we aren't going to be deciding the champion off this win. It will be the one afterwards, potentially. So far, Method Orange have a lead. I'm very surprised to not see the Super Frogs try their double destruction Warlock into this composition. We were saying that maybe they're hesitant into the Windwalker Death Knight, but this time they would have known. Or, no, they would not have known it was coming their way, so they did blind lock in the Rogue Warlock. But if they do know what's coming their way, I want to see that double destruction Warlock make a return for them. It Definitely performed great against Method Orange earlier on. Snuts is trying to solo Sidu, popping Vendetta and really looking for an early kill. Maybe with some coordinated Maledicts they can find it. Not likely. They don't go for it. Sidu should recover. Pairing that Ascendance with Pack Spirit, trying to heal the team for free. Good combo of that Azrite trait and the spell Ascendance from Sidu. Immediate recovery and it's free, so nice trade. This map, though, is advantageous for Method Orange as they can easily deny Cubsy from drinking, although right now they're not doing the... Okay, never mind, Cubsy couldn't drink for that long because Chanimal was taking too much damage, potentially just getting destroyed here in game number five. 
manages to recover. This is Nuts now trying to set up. Gets Sidu's Gladiator's Medallion with that blind. Potentially, we see Sidu be the kill target here on hook point. Now that Snuts has created that opening. Yeah, and definitely Sidu could be in some trouble. Chaos Bolt gets interrupted. If that Chaos Bolt went off, it would have been good night, Sidu. Good backup there from Mez and Trill to keep him alive. Now Sidu out of line of sight should be able to easily survive. So Nuts committed his kidney shot. Mez and Trill are going to be looking healthy. Cubsy's mana is the only thing in this game that is not looking healthy, and I don't think he's going to be able to sneak away and get a drink, especially on this map. Trill has been all over him so far. Cubsy looking for more heals onto Chanimals. Chanimals does have the unending resolve, so he could potentially try to make an offensive play, trade that out in order to buy Cubsy a little bit of time. Now Cubsy into a full hex. Nicely done by Sidu, but Mez is the one that's taking most of the pressure. Chanimals gets gripped away from Cubsy. Cubsy has to find some heals. He manages to find some onto Chanimals to keep him alive. Sidu has to play catch up here onto Mez. We look at mana. Sidu is just so far ahead in this match. Yep, definitely creating a significant lead for himself here on hook point, facing the Super Frogs in the grand final of the North American region. The Super Frogs are looking to try and tie point earnings with the boys, but if Medlin Orange can win here, they will not. The boys will remain in first place in terms of points, but it seems to be a three-horse race in North America. That fourth place spot still up for grabs and a lot of teams looking to get it. That of Storm, that of of rejects most notably as well as never lucky there's a lot of teams competing for that four spot in north america trill gets bursted down mez makes the trade to deny will it be enough it does appear to be the case anti-magic zones protection saving the day cubsy trying to sit down for a drink again but not able to find really any mana off the back of it the lead is slowly building for method orange yeah, definitely channels getting gripped behind the pillar once again away from cubsy he gates back to Cubsy, the safety of his Restoration Druid, trying to get some heals. Cubsy moves in, finds the bash onto Sidu. Trill now into a full kidney shot. How is he going to respond? He trinkets out. Darkness gets dropped out as well. Nicely done. That's exactly what he needed to do. That was a scary situation. Sidu still has his trinket and spirit link as well, so they have that to fall back onto if they really need. Sidu with a nice tremor totem on the fear of Chanimals. Will keep him in the fight and keep his team aggressive. Trill trying to find the damage onto Chanimals. Cubsy almost completely tapped on mana, and this is where Method Orange is going to start really ripping into Super Frogs. Cubsy with no mana. Chanimals is just going to be getting lower and lower. There has to be some semblance of counter pressure here for the Super Frogs, but it just seems like Method Orange, they have all the defensive tools that they need. Except Sidu, he actually doesn't have a trinket. There's still a window of opportunity here for the Super Frogs. Chanimals trying to get something done with his unending resolve. There's no trinket on Trill, no trinket on Sidu. They can get CC. They just need to hold on a little bit longer, but I don't know if they have enough time. Chanimals getting low. The kidney shot on Mez. Spearling Totem gets dropped out, buying Method Orange enough time to take down Chanimals and claim game number five. And once again, a small map going to work for Method Orange. Zico, it is week number three of the AWC. This is the grand final for North America. Method Orange, your reigning BlizzCon champions, weren't even able to make it into the top eight the first week. They have bounced back. Now they are on a war path. If they win this, they will take down the entire cup, but Super Frogs stand in their way. Currently, the number two team in all of North America. Yeah, we'll have to see what Method Orange can get done in this game there on match point. If they win this, they win the entire tournament which is going to be exactly what they want. Missing out on points in the first week. They need to be securing as many as possible if they want to get their spot at the Spring Finals. Interrupt on Sidu. Mez taking a little bit of damage early on, and it looks like Super Frogs or Method Orange, they're going to be going for a split strategy. Wealthy Man trying to control up Trill, who's just sitting on him. Mez taking an absurd amount of damage right now. Channels, that was his Infernals. And Method Orange, they are really respecting it. They're sitting at the pillow. They don't want to throw away another game just by letting Chanimals do whatever he wants, and I think that's a very intelligent decision. Method Orange are on match point now. If they can win this, they will be the champions of the Spring Cup number three of the Arena World Championship Series. It's looking good so far here as Wealthy Man is isolated and forced into his first ice block. Moments into the match, we have not seen ice blocks forced until dampening earlier on in the series and super frogs are already on match point having that major defense blown out early on is going to just add to the pressure yeah wealthy man he's not going to be much of a threat at this point in the game when trill and mez can just sit on him limit his frost bolts limit his ability to put out a blizzard even killing off his pets it is really hard for wealthy man to get counter pressure it's really going to be up to channels in this match have to make sure he's looking for crowd control on c2 he's finding chaos bolts in this match 
to really try to make Mez and Trill back off. Wealthy Man, if not, Wealthy Man's going to be in a world of pain. Yeah, most certainly a world of pain indeed. We do see Sidu caught in crowd control as Chanimal tries to set up to counter aggress. Chanimal has definitely been the MVP for the Super Frogs here today. Can he do it? Can he carry his team back here? They need to win two in a row to take this. If they can manage to do it, they will then tie the boys first place in terms of points almost guaranteeing themselves a spot i would think at the spring final so it's definitely important for them a lot on the line if they do want to accrue the most amount of points not to mention that the uh, the highest amount of points earned can secure a guaranteed spot to the world final so securing first place consistently or a top three is definitely of utmost importance to all of the teams in this tournament competing in this season Cubsy getting mana rifted down. Trill has secured a massive lead. Ooh. Polymorph stolen by Mez. Potential ice block force for Method Orange, but Wealthy Man denies it. Great temporal shield timing once again, although that lead is still establishing itself. How is Cubsy going to manage to sneak away and regenerate mana? It's pretty much required at this point. Yeah. Wealthy Man and Channel, so they're going to have to find crowd control on Mez and Trill and C to keep everyone locked down in place. But with Wealthy Man kiting to Cubsy, it becomes more and more difficult for Cubsy to realistically get away, get a restealth, and try to regain some of his precious mana. Although he does sneak away. I don't know if Method knows where he is. He's sitting down. He could reset his mana completely. This is disastrous for Method Orange. Cubsy basically gets a full reset here. Still drinking as much as humanly possible. And now Wealthy Man going to be fine. He has a Temporal Shield. Cubsy connects the Iron Bark to play catch up. He did trade out a little bit of his defenses there to get that drink off, but it was more than worth it. And Super Frogs have maintained and actually have now a massive mana lead. Really well done on the part of Cubsy to secure his team that late game fight that is pretty much required against this composition. It's so durable. Method Orange have brought it, and obviously Method Black have been utilizing it as well. That Demon Hunter and Death Knight paired together bring so much self-sufficiency that Sidu effectively doesn't even have to heal them. He can just focus on denying casts, breaking up crowd control, and keeping his team aggressive. Certainly, Mez now caught into a stun, fear on Sidu. And you can see Trill still chasing down Wealthy Man as Wealthy Man does manage to find a Polymorph. To slow him down just a little bit, Cubsy snuck away and got another drink in this matchup. Sitting on full mana, things are looking good for Super Frog. Sidu is going to have a more and more difficult time actually keeping his team alive and aggressive in this matchup. Trill hasn't been able to find the mana which we normally see. Now Sidu sitting down for a drink. Chanimals and Wealthy Man moving in, making sure they can actually stop him. Now Mez on 50% health. Do they have the damage to take him down? I think with the pillar, with Sidu backing him up, Mez is going to be fine in this situation. But Cubsy once again taking an opportunity to get away. Reset his mana. Now he's at full mana once again entering dampening. And this is the exact situation you want to be in if you are Super Frogs. Yeah, Cubsy setting his team up quite well here in game number six. But they're still on match point. Making one mistake will cost them the entire tournament. They cannot afford to. They've been playing excellently in this grand final, but they need to overcome this composition that has been crafted. The Demon Hunter and the Death Knights seems to be one that is so difficult to thwart. We saw the team of the Pumpers manage to overcome it with their Warrior and Death Knight composition, but Super Frog simply don't have that as an option. So Ooh. they're trying to navigate a different route to victory against it, focusing much more on crowd control. Really, the only mistakes being made by the Super Frogs are on part of Wealthy Men, giving Mez the opportunity with that Dark Simulacrum to steal Polymorphs and then apply them to Cubsy. Wealthy Man definitely needs to keep an eye on that. That's an opening that Method Orange will look to exploit later on now that Dampening has begun. Inevitably, this game will close because healing will just simply become ineffective and it's still anyone's game. Yep, Cubsy sitting in the backfield should be able to keep Wealthy Man up. Like you said, it's really going to be up to Wealthy Man to make sure Mez is not taking these polymorphs for him. That's going to be a lot of generated pressure for their team if they are able to find it. Cubsy sits down for a drink once again, and this is not how we normally see Method Orange play this matchup. Normally, we see Trill easily be able to hunt down Cubsy in this matchup and consistently st stop him from drinking, get the mana rifts on cooldown. But this is just a completely different team. It seems like Cubsy's just been able to easily sneak away so far in this matchup. 
Maybe this is not the strategy that Method Orange want. Maybe they think they can actually just take down Wealthy Man regardless of mana. It doesn't really matter to them. Temporal Shield gets used by Wealthy Man. Another Polymorph gets stolen by Mez. Nicely done. He's been doing such a good job with that Deathland ability, Dark Simulacrum, to steal Wealthy Man's Polymorph, get crowd control for his team. But now Mez could be in some trouble. Chaos Bolt connects. He deflects it with the anti-magic shell as Sidu was caught into a polymorph. And Sidu's actually opting to play relentless in this matchup. So he's going to be caught into fears and polymorphs. And he won't be able to trink it out of them. But they'll all be reduced in duration because of that relentless PvP talent. Now Wealthy Man trying to get some counter pressure here with the Frozen Orb. Mez still in a little bit of trouble. Because that Spirit Link actually dropped out by Sidu as well to keep his team alive. Mez's HP just isn't going up. The damage from Super Frogs is too high. Now Sidu into a full Polymorph. Mez forced to retreat, but Channel's there looking for some Chaos Bolts. Switches it over to Mez. Another Polymorph coming in from Wealthy Man. That was his Icy Veins as well as the Dark Soul and the Infernal. So Super Frogs committed a lot to that all-in attack, but they managed to get huge cooldowns. Yeah, I mean, Trill still has Darkness, so he can definitely save the day. That Ice Block that Method Orange got earlier in the match basically doesn't matter at this point. Now that Cold Snap has become available for Wealthy Man, he'll have two more Ice Blocks for the rest of the match, which means Method Orange need to clean up their offense. They need to coordinate that Gladiator's Maledict three at a time to take out Wealthy Man, or at least get Ice Blocks out of the way. Wealthy Man definitely can't afford to keep making these mistakes on the Dark Simulacrums of Mez. If he gives a Polymorph during a push, there's a Maledict activation by Mez, dispelled by Cubsy, and there's no follow-up. Definitely uncoordinated attempt there by Method Orange. That then gives Super Frogs a lot more room to breathe, securing further crowd control over onto Sidu. But before Dampening is a tad bit deeper, it's going to be too difficult to puncture through the defense of the classes that Mez and Trill are currently playing. Pressure is finally mounting towards Wealthy Man. Cubsy struggling, although his drinks earlier on in the match have definitely secured himself an opportunity here in the late game for his team, playing it out to the bitter end. But ultimately, if they do manage to win, we're going to a game seven, and it will be the comp and the map advantage for Method Orange. Sidu still locked down in crowd control. Mez at the pillar line of siding. Trill ducking around now as well. They're going to switch to Sidu. They've got him caught midfield. He's running relentless. They need to back him up. Lots of damage flying in. Astral Shift from Sidu should be enough to survive. I really like that swap to Sidu. Great targeting by the Super Frogs. If they can make another move like that, they definitely could close this out and bring it to Game 7. Yeah, there's no question about it. With the, without the benefit of the Astral Shift, he could easily fall down, but I don't think Mez and Trill are going to make that mistake again. They can't leave Sidu behind in that situation. Cubsy's man is still doing really well. Honestly, the control from Chanimals and Wealthy Man has been quite high in this game. Mez taking quite a bit of pressure. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped out by Sidu to reduce some of that incoming damage. Nice cap stun coming in from Sidu to slow down Wealthy Man. He blinks away, gets gripped back in by Mez, trying to avoid some damage. A beautiful Shadow Fear from Chanimals, setting Wealthy man up to actually get some cast off get some damage rolling full polymorph on trill now mez having to retreat behind the pillar once again i think cd's actually looking for a drink but that gets shut down there by channels with the rain of fire in the meantime though cubsy he manages to sneak away i think he's at full mana and that's a full reset there for the super frog wealthy man he has both of his ice blocks channels every single defensive cooldown but method orange they still have a chance at some point in the game these please set us they managed to overwhelm for an extended period of time yeah, i think the targeting needs to change here for method orange but they're falling behind thrill trying to hide around the corner very low on health that soul rending healing so much ineffective and he's not benefiting from it when he can't attack. Wealthy Man blinks in to try and close it. Trill denies it for at least a second, but will it be enough? Sidu is still crowd controlled. Spirit Link, good shot calling. No overreaction on the side of Method Orange despite that scary situation. But I would say that it's just going to increasingly happen. Uh, there's no mana lead anymore. There's no pressure lead. There's no cooldown lead. This game is slipping away from Method Orange, and I think we're going to be going to a game number seven. They make the swap. They need to try and gut down Channel. They can't. They don't have the time to get through two ice blocks. But if they try and push right now, Channel has Infernals down. He could get a kill with his Chaos Bolt. Gets denied. They have to avoid this Chaos Bolt at all costs. They go for the Maledict play. They're looking to close here and push the game seven. They deny it further. Channel still just wants it. If he can get just this one. 
one Chaos Bolt. He gets gripped. He's desperately trying to find the one Chaos Bolt. He's not able to get it just yet. Maybe they go after Sidu. Uh, there's the Chaos Bolt, but now that Dark Soul has faded, the threat is basically lost, and now Method Orange need to go for the kill. This is exactly what they needed to do. Go on Shanimals. He was setting up way too much, way too much pressure, and now Trill and Mez, they have a target they can actually heal off of, which is so important. Full Polymorph onto Cubsy, stolen once again by Mez, doing such an excellent job. Animals having to retreat, heat gates away, but Mez and Trill, they're gonna be chasing him down. This is looking like a completely different game with this target choice swap. Animals burns through his unending resolve. That's the Iron Bark as well. Method Orange is looking good. I don't know if Animals is gonna be able to recover, tries to get away with the Mortal Coil, looking for a Chaos Bolt. Mez could be in some trouble. Anti-Magic Shell has to get traded out. Sidu needs to keep his team in the fight, but he's got no mana left. I think oh. he's actually hurting a little bit. Another Polymorph stolen by Mez. MVP of the team, if they can take down Channel off the back of these polymorphs. Mez has been doing such an incredible job, but I don't know if they have the damage to really push uh -oh. Channel over the top. Sidu has no mana left whatsoever. Super Frog's looking to stay in this tournament. Mez once again with the Dark Sim of the Crumb. Did he get another crowd control? No way Mez is gonna be able to survive. Darkness gets dropped out. Sidu has no mana, no Spear Link, no nothing. And Mez ultimately will fall. Super Frog's tie up this series. Mez plays out of his mind there. Gets so much CC across the board. Mostly up happened to their potential and here with Snuts as well. They have already just had a better year than they had last year in a lot of ways. Obviously only three cups, but you look at them and you just say, how is this not a team that makes it deep, deep, deep throughout brackets? throughout the entire year. Well, we're gonna find out right now who the next champ is. No matter what, this is the last game of the day, so you don't wanna go anywhere. We were going to be crowning our champions of the North American Spring Cup number three. Can Method Orange secure a first place finishes? They've been battling it out. They've set themselves up here with a map advantage and a comp advantage. Super Frogs are gonna have to battle uphill, but Chanimal has been making play after play this entire day. If there was a team to be able to do it it would be the super frogs here and now infernals get dropped out now a bash on Sidu. he doesn't have a trinket full fear secured by channels what are they going to be able to make happen in this situation mez kiting away double mortal coil comes in from channels he's looking to play aggressive that's going to be the dark soul but unfortunately for channel mez and trill say no way and they run away they're going to be out of line of sight avoiding all of this destruction warlock damage i like the positioning from method orange in the situation Chanimals wants to play in this room, but it's also easy for Method Orange to just run away and line of sight all of these offensive cooldowns Chanimals has available. And once those are gone, it's gonna be easy for Method Orange to move in and continue the pressure that they need. Cubsy is playing Feral Affinity. On this map, it will be difficult for him to reset, regenerate mana on drinks. So Method Orange can win the safe long game with the mana rift strategy. And in the short term, everyone stacks up. And if you're a Demon Hunter and a Death Knight, you can cleave multiple targets. So that's going to be great for them as well. I guess the downside is that Snuts' fan of knives will also cleave. Let's see what they can get done here in the starting room. Snuts is trying to develop pressure on multiple targets, but Chanimal is falling behind. Cubsy makes a trade to recover. Sidu dumping in a couple of heals. They are using spell locks on Trill's I beams, trying to deny damage output from him. But then if spell lock isn't available for Sidu, he can easily just heal the entire team. So it's an interesting choice from the Super Frogs to use their spell locks on I beam. I'm curious to see how it plays out for them in terms of maybe mana management into the late game. You can see on Black Rock Hold though that Fan of Knives really doing a lot of work. Good crowd control by the Super Frogs. They find an opening and it's going to bag them in Icebound Fortitude, a very powerful defensive cooldown down super frogs to capitalizing on the errors of method orange definitely turning this map in their own favor this fan of knives build from snuts is definitely working out yeah it's super good when they're all clumped up he's able to get a lot of damage out get rupture on all three targets and that just makes it so the super frogs have three different targets three different opportunities in the match to actually land a killing blow trill now into a kidney shot are they going to be able to find the damage smoke bomb gets dropped out bash thrown in by Cubsy to take Trill down. It gets interrupted on the I-beam once again. Sidu caught into the full blind. He trinkets out immediately, looking for the healing wave to top Trill off. Trill and Mez looking very healthy. Chanimal's the one that could potentially be in some trouble, but 
with the unending resolve as well at Cubsy using the Iron Bark. He should be able to survive. Channel is actually making an adaptation in this matchup. He's playing the Nether Ward, which will allow him to immune the interrupts coming in from Mesentril if he really needs to. Yeah, and how many times would he have been able to get a kill if he was able to get a Chaos Bolt? I think that was a smart decision from Channel's to make that difference, to pick up Nether Ward so he can get Chaos Bolt cast during critical moments in the fight. Perhaps that could be enough for Super Frogs to take it here in Game 7 of the Grand Finals. Will the reigning BlizzCon champions be taken out by the Super Frogs, or will they get to reclaim their first place spot here today? We will decide in this final game. Right now, Cubsy is falling behind, but not nearly as significantly as I was expecting. Good denial on that wild growth. A very expensive heal during Innervate would have been free, so denying that bonus healing from Cubsy is going to put him behind on mana. Thorns activated onto Chanimal to try and allow Snuts and or snar, allow Chanimal and Snuts more potential for counter pressure. Potentially with Thorns, Chaos Bolts, and Fan of Knives, they can counteract the self healing of the Death Strike and the Soul Rending of the Demon Hunter. But at this point, it isn't the case. However, deep and damp it will be the case. Super Frogs going after Mez. Double crowd control. Channel trying to set up. Chaos Bolt connects. Not dealing too much damage there as Earthen Wall Totem was already activated by Sidu. Catching a couple of healing waves. And they have been constantly kicking Trill and spell locking Trill on I Beam. So Sidu should be less hesitant, I think, to cast healing waves. But after the game where Trill died to a spell lock, I, I don't blame him for being overly cautious. Yeah, I feel like Method Orange is being a little bit more sloppy. I don't know if fatigue has gotten to them, but Cubsy, he's been sitting down, drinking, hiding in plain sight, just a few steps away from Method Orange. Normally, early on in the day, Method Orange, they were on top of stopping these Resto Druids, never allowing them an opportunity to go for drinks, but Super Frogs has been able to maintain their mana in this matchup. Maybe Method Orange feels like they don't even need the mana lead. Eventually, with dampening, they can just take Channimals down. That definitely could be an option, but I still think it's worth stopping Cubsy from drinking when they can. It's not taking a little damage right now as well as Cubsy is. They make a swap onto him. Mez looking to line of sight. Channimals, double Chaos Nova coming in. That's going to be slowing down both Channimals and Cubsy. Nicely done by Trill as he looks to get some cleave pressure on all three members. Now Cubsy almost completely out of mana. Trill been doing a really good job at making sure now he's landing these mana rifts and they've been adding up very quickly onto Cubsy. And unfortunately for him, he's already very low on mana as we move deep into damp or closer into dampening. Cubsy does manage to escape looking for a restyle. Trill looking to shut it down, and I think this is really important. Now that Cubsy's behind on mana, Method Orange, they need to start looking to consistently stop Cubsy and eventually secure that mana lead. Yeah, Method Orange can just play it safe, just keep it together defensively and go for mana rift after Cubsy and deny him regenerating mana. Chanimal pulls the trigger on uh -oh. damage. Sidu is the target. Is he going to falter here in game number seven? Mez is protecting him. Currently with that anti-magic zone, he's going to immediately retreat back to the pillar so he can line of sight Chanimal. Activating that Spirit Walker's Grace and immuning the incoming interrupts and able to restabilize the team. It's now Channel on the back foot as Method Orange looked to make a push with that imprison, but Snuts denies the connect with a kidney shot. Sidu answers with a grounding totem on Channel's Chaos Bolt. Threats tossed back and forth. Denial on both sides. It's still anyone's fight here, even though Method Orange are etching ahead. Yep, Cubsy commits his Iron Bark there as well as his Thorns onto Channels. He's going to be redirecting some da some of that damage. Channels manages to find a fear. Oh! Mez could be in some trouble. He gets the anti magic shell off. That should be enough to make him tanky enough. Trill potentially overreacting with the darkness, but I can't really blame them. There's been so much significant burst opportunities for, for Super Frogs. You definitely don't want to throw the series away. There's only one game left. The winner of this game will win the tournament. Mez and Trill getting lower and lower. Another off kick there by Snuts. He's been doing a good job making sure he's rotating kicks on Sidu when he is in range. But Channimals is the one that's falling behind. Cubsy has to play catch up. He's caught into the asphyxiate stun. Mez getting low, caught into a kidney shot. He breaks out of that with Icebound Fortitude. Sidu still has the Trinket and Spirit Link to keep Method Orange alive. And I feel like the deeper this game goes, Method Orange are slowly but surely going to be pulling ahead in terms of the damage they deal to Channimals. But Cubsy managed to maintain his mana, actually go for a little bit of a drink there to play catch up. Method Orange are just making small mistakes, and Super Frogs are capitalizing on them over the late game. And even though they're compositionally and map disadvantaged, I actually think the Super Frogs are etching ahead and likely to take this. They're going to take the whole thing. Sidu gets stunned on his trinket. They're gunning down for Mez. Is this going to be a Spirit Link totem? Sidu gets feared away. They use Spell Lock Control. I think it might have been more wise to save that in that position. They may have been a nice triple. Triple stun by Channimal. Sidu sneaks into Spirit Link totem, but now their defense is cracked. There's not much left. They're stacked up for Fan of Knives, and Snuts is tearing in. 
Yeah, Cubsy sitting down for a drink as well. And Snutsy has the vendetta. Method Orange, they're going to have to hold on through that cooldown mess. Certainly is going to have to use the anti-magic zone as soon as humanly possible. Does have the anti-magic shell. There's a full kidney shot. What is Mez going to do? Opting to sit it just now. Mez pulls the trigger on the vendetta. Looking to take Mez down. Mez responds with his trinket as well as his anti-magic shell. Snutsy still taking quite a bit of damage. Safeguard Prox uses the feint. Does have the evasion to fall back onto if he really needs, but Cubsy with the drink still doing great on mana. Sidhu as well, they're about tied at this point. Cubsy moving in a cat form, looking like he potentially wants to find a bash. Finds it potentially on Sidhu, but that was a beautiful Chaos Nova from Trill, catching Cubsy as he pounced over towards Sidhu to look for that bash. Was able to shut that down, good plays. All right, can Method Orange stay alive for another minute? That's when they will have access to Trill's Darkness, the most powerful defensive cooldown. They may not be able to. Channel wants to close this out. I'd love to see another Ward Chaos Bolt. He doesn't go for it. I, I think another Ward Chaos Bolt might have at least banked him an anti-magic zone on that push. I think it was a huge missed opportunity for Super Frogs. They definitely could have pulled ahead. Sidhu, with that Ascendance activated, is looking to try and stabilize the team, but struggling at 26% damage. Once again, sloppy play. They're just letting Cubsy drink in the middle of the map. He resets his mana. They've got no lead in that sense. They need to burst somebody down and overwhelm them at this point. They could have secured the late game advantage, but sloppy play is now allowed Cubsy to crawl back in this series and potentially take the whole thing. They're setting up for big damage here on Mez. How will they respond? Earthen Wall Totem soaks the hit. Nice grip into triple stun for Method Orange as they try and reverse the pressure. They've switched their attention to Snuts. They're focusing a lot more on him, but that could leave Channel open, and I don't think you want to leave Channel open. I think you're right about that. Cubsy gets interrupted. Snuts could be in some trouble, but he's kind of baiting them. He still has the vanish. If he gets in too much trouble, he can vanish away. That'll give Cubsy enough time to keep him alive. Triple stun setup coming in from Snuts off the back of that vanish. Now getting aggressive on Mez, who's caught into a kidney shot. Double coil coming out from Channel's onto Sidhu. He gets caught into the Shadow Fear as well as the Bash. Darkness saving the day for Trill, keeping Mez alive. Method Orange hang on by a thread, but there's really not much left for them to work with. I mean, it's do or die. They have to kill Snuts. They've got no mana really left in the tank. They've got cooldown, so they can just push forward with nothing but aggression, but they're going to leave Channel open. They're going to leave all of the Chaos Bolts open at 33% dampening. That's really risky, but they, they have got no other choice. There's too much defense for Channel. There's too much mana on Cubsy. Mez is burning the candlestick down quickly with Icebound Fortitude now out of the way. They desperately try and grip Snuts to the pillar to burst him. They're not finding it. Cubsy he stabilizes. This Thorn's damage is going to be way more devastating at 35% dampening. Sidhu is basically tapped out on mana. He's got Spearling Totem and Anti-Magic Zone. As soon as those are gone, it's basically it for the Method Orange here in Game 7. Cubsy, is he sitting in oh, is he open again to get a drink? He's finally denied, but Channel has secured a full fear onto Sidhu. Mez is isolated. Can they take him down? They aren't able to connect. Trill is peeling Snuts away. He's a bit reluctant to overextend. Actually, some hesitation here on Snuts' part. I guess they see the advantage they've got in terms of mana. Snuts doesn't want to throw the game, so he's playing it more slowly, allowing his whole team to then push forward. Stun on Troll, they make the swap. They're trying to catch him off guard. Triple Shadow Fury again, secured by Channel. Dark Soul available. Infernal's in 10. Super Frogs are looking to take it. Everything on the line at 40% dampening. Sidhu gets caught into the fear. Trill in midfield. Who is Super Frogs going to be going after? All three members looking prime at this particular point in the game. Channel taking a little bit of burst. Now full kitty shot on Mez. He does have the anti magic zone. If he drops or if he has it available, he might need to use it. Dark Soul Infernals gets used by Channels. They need to avoid Channels at all costs. Snuts uses the everyman for himself. For Rachel breaks out of the stun, looking to close out this game. Fan of knives fans coming in. Sidhu's getting lower. How are you going to keep your team alive? Sidhu, you got the spirit link totem. He needs to make sure he drops it in the nick of time. But Super Frogs just seem to have all the advantages. They're all dead. Sidhu, what? What are you going to do off the back of sloppy plays? They're just all dead. Super Frogs have done it. They battled uphill, disadvantage after disadvantage, but have managed to conquer the Spring Cup number three. They just took to make it to land because that's really the reason that we care about this.